it's either in your underwear, in something very tight, or in your noodlums, whichever. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carla and I make videos about weight loss and my life after weight loss. Some beauty and fashion also thrown in there. So if that's the kind of thing that you like, please give me a subscribe. For today's video, I am gonna be talking to you about the six different ways that I use to measure my weight loss success. I previously have lost 183 pounds in 14 months. I then uh, got pregnant and I've had a beautiful baby boy who was born in January this year. And I'm currently on a postpartum journey to lose the 40 pounds that I put on. I'm a third of the way there, uh, spoiler alert. And um, also on a feeling. So I really am such an advocate for mental health and how mental health is hugely impacted by weight loss and weight and how it's very much so intertwined. And this video really feeds into that, the how our minds really control our weight loss and our actions to lose weight, uh, to lose weight. Today, as I said, I'm going to be talking to you about the six ways that, um, that I used to measure my success other than just the scales. We place so much emphasis on the number on the scales, but that number doesn't actually really mean that much. We have to look at other ways in which that number translates into other areas of our lives. And also there are times when the scales does not play ball. You might need to take a big poo. Let's face it, you might have eaten too much salt the day before. If you are a female, perhaps you are coming up to your period. There can be so many ways in which the scales does not play ball. It doesn't like your body doesn't know, OK, it's Wednesday, it's weigh in day. Let's shed the weight. You know, it, it's going to it, these things you can't control. And let's always remember weight loss is not linear. There can be so many reasons as to why it's not playing ball, even if you are doing everything exactly the way you should be. So these are the things that I liked to use that really helped me to keep my head in the game and stopped me from throwing the baby out with the bathwater if I plateaued or if I was having a gain or anything like that. Okay, first one that I'm going to talk to you about is measurements. And I mean old school tape measurements. Grab yourself a tape measure and measure yourself whether you are at the start of your journey or wherever you are now, even if you are near the end, because the biggest difference happens between, well, not the biggest difference, but a very significant difference happens between kind of about two thirds of the way to your weight loss goal and the end. I have a video coming about that as well. I did this at the start of my weight loss journey and I am so glad that I did. And I did it again now at the start of my postpartum journey. I take a tape measure and I measure in all different areas. I measure my shoulders this way around, measure around my bust, around my waist, around my hips, my thigh, my upper thigh and my lower thigh, my calf. I wish I measured my ankle, but I never did. Measure my upper arm here where it's like the lowest flabbiest part. And another area that I wish I measured but didn't is my neck. We are typically the very last people to see the difference in our weight loss. So having something like this will show you that there is actually a physical difference and that makes a huge impact for your head to keep you in the game, to keep you being consistent. Number two, which is probably the thing that I'm most known for on Instagram and anybody else who does weight loss vlogs or weight loss Instagrams is probably best known for before photos. But there is a specific type of before photo that I'm talking about and I honestly wish that I had taken more of these. I don't mean like before in your general life, you know, photos that you had on Facebook or even photos that you might like have not put on uh, on the internet because you were ashamed of them. I have many of those. But photographs, so the kind of before photographs that I'm talking about are the photograph where you are either in a tank top and leggings or tight shorts. If you're a man, maybe you want to wear a tank top or go shirtless and you know, just have some kind of tight bottoms on, cycling bottoms, your boxers, if they're tight, tighty whities if that's you, you do you, sir. 
whatever it is that you that shows your figure that's what's so important you can do it in your underwear i'm not telling you that you have to go and share these with anybody else this is for you on the days when the scales isn't playing ball that you can take a photograph in exactly the same position wearing the same thing or wearing nothing if that's your thing and see the results because that is what will help to keep your head in the game one tip that i will have a gift to you is take it in exactly like for me now i have you guys resting on my windowsill and i could take a picture against this white wall and i know what the perspective is it's a little bit harder to get if you get me it's a little bit harder if you are moving into different rooms and different heights but if you can kind of keep it the same and take your progress photos in that same position and i have a very specific position that i've taken all of my progress photos in uh so if you if you do that it kind of helps a little bit so progress photos and um, befores either in your underwear in something very tight or in your noodlums whichever number three is on very similar vein to photographs and it's something that i wish i did at the very start of my weight loss journey and i didn't do and that is a video we can all make ourselves look smaller in photographs if you have been overweight or don't like the way you've looked for a long time i can guarantee that you have found some way to stand or to move to look the best that you feel that you can in a photograph however in a video yeah it's a picture tells a thousand words a uh, video says it all so you cannot hide in a video by taking a before video and then comparing that as you're going down and doing progress videos, you will see a massive, massive difference. This is something simple. So, you know, you like walk to the camera, turn around, walk away, make sure the camera can see your full body. Obviously, the perspective of my camera right now isn't working for that, but um, that's just so you get the general gist. So really do spin around see your full body you don't have to look at it now you can look at it later and similar to the before photographs you can use canva you can use pic monkey you can use pic collage any of those and you can do your before and afters from those number four are yardsticks and these are some of the best ways to tell that something has changed in your physical body and what i mean by yardsticks are things like towels like a tight pair of jeans I had a specific towel that I used continuously. It was my towel and it never closed on me. It would barely close, but there would be a nice little triangle here. And if we had guests and my father-in-law or my in-laws were staying or my mom or anybody, you know, like there was bits of me hanging out if I'm running to the bathroom and back to the bedroom or something like that. So having a towel that shows, you know, how how little it closes and then as you start to go down you can start to see it closing and then all of a sudden one day it closes fully the same with a pair of jeans maybe you can only get them up to your thighs and then they're up to your upper thighs and then your bum and then they get up here and then you can close them and then you can zip them and then you can breathe in them because you know they're all different stages so yardsticks like that really help in order to show you what the, the translation of that number on the scales is. Number five may not be applicable to everybody, but it was definitely for me, which is cardiovascular fitness. I have always hated any type of exercise, except weightlifting when I was older. But as a child, I hated running. I didn't know how to do it. I hated walking. I would avoid any type of walking. I hated anything to do with cardiovascular fitness, honestly, except dancing, but that's a different story. I hated it. Anything that I was made to do, I couldn't stand it. I remember a 2.2 mile run that we we're made to do in school. And I've never, like, let's just say, I've never had so many periods in a very short amount of time. I hated cardiovascular fitness, but as you may know that I walk one hour every single day as part of my weight loss journey. And that is the only exercise that I do. And I hated it at the start. And as I started to get fitter, I started to like it more. And I use my Fitbit. I currently have a Sense. Um, I had a, a Versa 2 before. And before that, I just used my phone and I used Strava um, or Map My Walk. And it showed me how much distance I could do. And then what you'll see is you can do more distance in that same amount of time. And that's building up your cardiovascular fitness. If you have a fitness device, that will show you as well your actual cardiovascular fitness levels. And I went from very poor 
to the second from the best that you can get in the 14 months of my weight loss journey, which is just, I was on cloud nine because that actually, that almost meant more to me than anything else. Well, not more to me, but it had a significant weight for me because, excuse the pun, because I have always been, had terrible cardiovascular fitness. So that was, I loved that. The final method to measure your success and weight loss that's different from the scales is with my favorite, and that is non-scale victories. These are things that you can do now that you couldn't do while you were at your start weight. I had a list that I wanted to achieve, and then I also had all these fabulous ones that showed up that I didn't even realize. My favorite one, and I've done a reel on this on my Instagram, is crossing my legs. Being able to cross my legs again, oh my God. I actually don't remember when I was able to cross my legs ever. I think I was a child probably. And for me, you know, like it, it had a big impact on my life in many ways because I, there was a lot of times where I had to be a spokesperson in my career and at a health event uh, attended by very high political figures, I had to sit on a panel on a high stool and I was with three other women who were all standard size, who were all able to cross their legs, but I was not. And I had a big split in my dress and I couldn't cross my legs and I felt like I was fully exposed. And I was also sitting in the middle and I felt like this. I have a photo here, I'll put it one of these sides and I felt so ashamed so being able to cross my legs has so much significance for me but there are other non-scale victories like not having to worry about fitting into a chair like I have turned down free events free meals free things wonderful opportunities because I've been afraid that I might not fit in the chair really non-scale victories are your they are the thing that will show you the work that you've done and showing up for yourself and the translation of that number on the scales and what they mean in your life. Going into a shop and knowing that you can fit into everything in there. First time in my life that I've ever, that's ever happened. My son is one of my biggest non-scale victories and I have a whole video about my non-scale victories, which I will link here as well for you. Guys, do not forget that you are worthy of showing up for yourself, no matter what that scale number says. The scale or the sad step, as I've heard it called before, is just a unit to measure the way you are showing up for yourself. It's not the be all and end all. It is just one of the ways that you can measure your, your success. Thank you guys for joining me on this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a comment down below and let's pick an emoji for today. I don't, there is a scales emoji, isn't there? Let's do a scales emoji if there is one. If not, do a heart. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notifications so you never miss a video and join me over on my Instagram as well, Half of Carla. I have so much content there. I'm really active on stories, a little bit too active sometimes, um, but, and yeah. Uh, thank you so much guys for joining me. I will talk to you all soon. Bye. Two videos done this morning. And there is the train and it has an itchy head.